This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. to your uh, your relative Bill Cosby. Oh my god. Yeah. Bill Cosby. All right. Anybody with any sense and anybody that knows Dick Gregory knows that Bill Cosby was Dick Gregory's replacement at the Playboy Club, right? Mm -hmm. We know Hugh Hefner was a pedophile hoe. Mm. And possibly an agent of the CIA. Mm. All right. You don't go to the Playboy Mansion to read the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You go to the Playboy Playboy Mansion because the Lord ain't my shepherd and I want it all. (laughs) I'm not saying Bill Cosby did everybody, but I will say if you go to a place where folks have orgies and all this kind of stuff, there's a chance that you're going to do some, too. Mm-hmm. chance and in that fast life in Hollywood and back in the 60s before the VD got so difficult to get rid of a lot of people was holes mm. a lot of people been holes and I'm tired of folks acting like Bill Cosby was the only hole back then and by the way a lot of folks wanted Bill Cosby because he's famous famous people in fact I made a I wrote an article about venereal disease at Howard University when I was an undergrad, you know, when I was a grad student, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And one of the comments I made was, I wish the sisters would only have sex with the boys on the football team when they won. So they'd have an incentive to win. Don't sex when they lose. Mm -hmm. That's not, a hoe don't pay you when you don't do it when you don't pay. So all you have to do is put on a uniform, be a bus driver. Someone's ready to jump your bones. That's how things are. So don't tell me that when Bill Cosby's getting Emmys on I Spy and got caught, that there weren't women throwing it at him. And everybody knows white women, when it comes down to black men, and for that matter, for the lesbians, white women are basically the most permissive females in the world. Mm. You know, to quote Cole, Cole Porter, any and everything goes. And everybody knows that sex, quaaludes, booze, come on. If you went to a white school, they have the parties, they get drunk, they have sex. That's what they do. They act like Bill Cosby is different. If he was, he's just one in the number. You don't see Mick Jagger getting picked up. You don't see David Bowie, a pedophile. He just died, get picked up. Mm-hmm. You don't hear about these. I mean, the, uh, a lot of these people, you don't hear about uh, the guys in Kiss, Knights and Satan Service, getting picked up. You don't hear about a lot of these movie stars and people that screwed everything that walked getting picked up. And it seems as if only Bill Cosby had a hard on from about 1965 to 1985. If he's the last penis standing, he was doing a public service. Quote me. 
and all these people rape. White women have been lying about rape all of our lives and the lives of our parents and grandparents and great grandparents and so forth. So why would I believe a white woman who didn't get a rape test didn't follow I me? Mean, white women are so powerless that they could by the dozens be raped by a black man and they'd be no punishment, no white zealous officer who loved his white supremacy and his white woman wouldn't come after Bill Cosby, no detective, nobody. Mm. Bullshit. Bullshit. They're white folk who are shooting black folks every day over traffic tickets. Do you really think a white racist officer, if he knew Bill Cosby was raping white women, like eating P Pringles chips out of a can, that he wouldn't take it upon himself? Like Mark Furman went after OJ, and we all know Mark Furman was having sex with Nicole Simpson, too, on OJ's dying, racist yeah. hypocrite. The bed he was screwing on, OJ paid for. Bigot. Yeah. So, white women lie. Black women lie. And we need to remember something. The woman, Presley, the lawyer that, that they, they got rid of, yeah. had proved about eight or nine out of the 40 women before they stopped her had all lied. Another one has come forward and said she lied. So at least 10 of them have lied. Now, if I add that 10 to over 15 that have been removed from the case in Massachusetts, you're talking about maybe out of 65 women that have, that I'm aware of that have lied on Bill Cosby. I think the numbers even bigger, but out of, I'm going to just put those numbers at 15, Plus the 40, that's 55. There's another, they, they have these numbers everywhere, but just think about it. I'm talking about out of 55 women, out of 55 women, there was 10 plus 15. Out of 55 women, 25 of them had been found to have been lying. Wow. That's almost half. <laughs> and and so to me, <laughs> just a probability saying with no evidence, they have no evidence on Bill Cosby, none. If almost half of the women are lying that we know of, I mean, the probability <laughs> that, and, and those folks can't produce evidence or anything, then who's to say the rest of them aren't lying? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an astounding number of people caught lying sounds like a conspiracy to me. Huh? Yes. Yeah, sure. All of those women lying, proven. Yeah. But you know what? I'll tell you, this, back to Kanye, the slaves say OJ did it. Yeah. The slaves say Bill Cosby did it. The slaves say Herman Cain did it. Mm -hmm. The slaves say... <laughs> <laughs> Tiger Woods did it. <laughs> and by the way, all of these people accused all had the same racist Jewish feminist name, Gloria Allred, orchestrating this persecution of black men. I know for a fact that Gloria Allred demanded $100 million from Bill Cosby for all these bimbos to go away, and he refused to pay. Mm. And that's when all this stuff started. Cosby's innocent. Now, Bill Cosby, let me just tell you how this happened with me because I wasn't really paying attention. Let's just break this down. I'm going to do this real fast. And I'll just do the whole family. Outside of Washington, D.C., you have an area called Sandy Spring. Sandy Spring is the oldest free black community in the, in the United States. Sandy Spring is where my mother's family is from. My grandfather was born there. My great-grandmother was born there. My great-great-grandmother was born there. And my family's been there since the 1700s, if not earlier. In fact, many of these people were free. In the 1770s, a lot of people do not know that the Quakers, the uh, Society of Friends, many of them let all their blacks go in 1775, which is, and that was commemorated by the creation of the Liberty Bell in Pennsylvania. It doesn't have a goddamn thing to do with the American Revolution. That's white folks lying like they're lying about this rape that they put on Cosby. Mm -hmm. Now, moving right back to Sandy Spring. 
Sandy Spring is the neighborhood, the community that Camille Hanks was born in. Camille Hanks's mother was born in Sandy Spring 22 years to the day before my mother was born. Um, the Hanks are my mother's relatives. Fact. That means Camille's some kind of cousin of mine. Now, jumping down to Virginia, there's a place called Lawrenceville, Virginia, where uh, that fraud Umar Johnson was supposed to buy the St. Paul College, which was started by my my ancestors that lived in Lawrenceville, the Short family and other families. They're all related. Lawrenceville is a very small town. It's never been big. I'm going to just give you folks some basic information because black people act like we're not connected to each other. Mm-hmm. We are breeding populations, and that's based on, demog- on, on, on demography and demographics. Why? You can't screw someone in Canada. You can only screw someone that, <laughs> I mean, unless you're like Long Dong, you can reach across the room. You've got to be fairly close to someone to be able to have sex with them. I don't even care if you're an unnatural person. Mm-hmm. Unless you're trying to catch something, a special orifice. I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to get out of that. All right. Which means love the ones you're with. Breed with the ones you're with. Which means if you're from uh, Due West, North Carolina or Union City, Tennessee, and it's a small town. If you're there long enough, everybody screwed somebody in the same area. Assume you're related. A lot of black folks think you have to have the same last name. Shows you how stupid we are. Mm -hmm. All of that to say that there are less than 2,000 people in Lawrenceville, Virginia today. So if I've had family there for about 170 years or longer, and Bill Cosby's family comes from there. <laughs> then all of us have been screwing each other for the better part of 200 years. So it's an impossibility that Bill Cosby is not related to me. And when I, uh, so I just want to say that. Now, the first certified black genealogist in the country is a woman by the name of Thelma Short Doswell. You can Google her. That's my cousin. Thelma Doss was the first black person to do all this work. In fact, when they had the bicentennial in 1976, they had six engraved family trees represent America. The tree that represented the 15% of the population of America that's black was the tree of the Blackwell or Brooks Campbell Short family. I'm a short. All right. Bill Cosby is related to the Short family of Lawrenceville, Virginia. I learned this when I was 10 years old in 1975 because Thelma happened to be one of my teachers in school. All right, moving through that. Our family had a family reunion in... 20 years, no, 10 years afterwards, in either 85 or 86. No, it's probably probably 85 or 86. Our family had a reunion in Germantown, Pennsylvania, at the encouragement of Miss Harris. Miss Harris is Bill Cosby's aunt. She's the one that took care of Bill when his mother wasn't around, Bill Ann Russell Cosby. Mm-hmm. So I knew Bill Cosby's aunt, the woman who helped raise him, because she was my cousin Thelma's best friend in the family. Bill Cosby refused to meet us. He snubbed his family. He didn't want us. He didn't reach out to us. I can recall his aunt crying because Bill refused. He was not far away, would not even come from his house to meet a better part of 2,000 people who had gathered to, in Philadelphia. Can you imagine? Oh. If you're like five or six minutes away and 2,000 people gather in their family, right? Oh. You're America's father. You're America's family person, right? Mm-hmm. But you, I mean, no one asks for any money. We have another, we have other famous people in the family. Arthur Ashe being someone else. Arthur Ashe always came and you could touch him and talk to him. Nobody bothered him. 
He didn't need security. Bill Cosby was, was either too busy or too distracted or too disinterested. And when his aunt, Mrs. Harris, died, he took out a whole page in Ebony Magazine to talk about her life and honor her. But one of the things that she wanted most from Bill that he refused to do was to meet his family. Mm. So understand... After Bill, I watched Bill Cosby's aunt cry. He's that nasty to her about not wanting to know us. My attitude is F Bill Cosby. Uh And trust me, over and over again, if I sent you a picture of my Uncle James Short, he looks like Bill Cosby. You know the little mole that Bill Cosby has in his right eye? Mm-hmm. I have a mole in the same place. My father has a mole in the same place. Mm-hmm. My uncle has a mole in the same place. My aunt. Uh, <laughs> you see how Bill Cosby's hair looks now? Mm-hmm. That's how my father's hair looks. If I'm going to send you some pictures. You'll realize, oh, my God, they do look very similar. Oh. And, and by the way, I was really mad because when I was working in a mental hospital up in Massachusetts before going to Harvard, uh, McLean Hospital, the mental patients would always go wild on Thursday night. Because the Cosby show is on. Mm-hmm. And the people would always come out and scream and point and say, that's you. You're Bill Cosby. You look just like Bill Cosby. And I'd have arguments. The people said, just because we're in the middle hospital doesn't mean that we don't know what Bill Cosby looks like. You're Bill Cosby. Can you imagine hearing that over and over again? That's an angry. Oh. If I told someone, well, Bill Cosby is disoriented, related, they'd say, oh, no, you're lying. So, man, so that just don't tell, I don't, people, oh, you're just like your cousin. Oh, if you do that again, I'm going to punch you. I'm tired of hearing that. <laughs> okay. I have a cousin named Suleiman. Suleiman looks exactly like Bill Cosby. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the way the men in our family look. You see how Bill Cosby's hair is kind of like fine. It's not nappy, nappy. Mm-hmm. That's the way our hair is. I have the same kind of hair. You see, it doesn't curl. I wish it did. I always wanted what people call nappy hair. I have semi-nappy. Mm-hmm. Mine sticks up like Don King. <laughs> and black people need to be grateful for the hair. I've tried to get waves. I have to use a whole can of grease to get waves in my hair. Mm-hmm. You got Anyway, back to Cosby. I, I basically got mad. Was Cosby after that? This is an F him. I don't want to know nothing about him. And because of it, you don't like me, you wouldn't even stop and talk to us and screw you. Now, what happened when Bill Cosby, in fact, I've never watched a full episode of The Cosby Show. Not once. Okay? okay? Never. <laughs> okay. I've seen pieces. Never. I've, if you start talking to me about an episode, I wouldn't know anything you're talking about. I did watch A Different World, but I never watched The Cosby Show. Because everyone talk about a great father is, I'm thinking you wouldn't even, you don't even own us. I mean, we, we, you know, it's not my fault we're related, and it shouldn't be a bad thing. I'm nobody to be ashamed of, right? Anyway, what happened with Cosby when he went off on black people? That I mean, I was just done, devil. Mm-hmm. Why are you doing that? I mean. You're talking about people not doing what they're supposed to do. You're not even in, in touch with your own family. And, and, and we're not stealing pound cake getting shot. Okay? Anyway, that happened. And a lot of my friends were people, Martin Kilson, my guy, um, uh, Glenn Ford, a black commentator. A lot of people I knew, the associates of mine, went off on Bill. I didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. All right, so that happened, so I moved to that. And when that thing came out about him with that girl, Amber, and he'd been banging that, banging that white woman, I was like, mm-hmm, all this stuff you're talking. See, a lot of folks forget Bill Cosby's daughter. One of his daughters was a big-time uh, freak, a druggie, right? Okay. And the reason that they gave that woman um, that was president of Spelman and I, I always forget her name because her name is unusual. Um, and I don't want to call it the wrong name, but the woman who was the president of the Spellman uh, back when he gave all that money, that was in part to say thank you to her for preventing his daughter from just going off the deep end. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. And by the way, you haven't heard anything from her. So, you know who I'm talking about. What's the woman's name that was president of Spellman? Um, you know, um, 
it just I just remember I just forgot it that fast. Um she and I can see her face and she's got like moles around her eyes too. It's fair complected. Mm-hmm. Um and I keep thinking one person that it's not is not Lynn Huntley of the Southern Education Fund. It's not Caribbean Heron. She's the last in the had the uh, Batman cape that was up at Mount Holyoke University. Um, she, oh God, I wish I could remember her name. If you got your computer, look at the Spellman presidents because her, her name, I mean, I don't see, you don't even hear about her anymore. But this lady was a phenomenal educator. And so as a payment for her saving his daughter's life, at least getting her directed, they gave all that money. Um, that's why that money was given. And um, in fact, I'm going to look for this woman's name while I'm talking to you, and, and I'll bring it up a little later. I just like to be able, because when you talk to black folks, they don't read, they don't research. You know what I'm saying? Her... Sure. So you have to say all of that, or if you don't remember the name, Negroes like playing trivial pursuit, but they don't like information, which is crazy. I mean, if I say it's the president of Spelman, it's a female, you should be able to look it up and find out what it is. Why do I have to remember all these names in particular when these people's names are irregular? I'm trying to get into my Google and do this. Forgive me for going off on the standard, because each time I try to remember, I used to talk to her and... uh I can't remember. I hate that when it's something like this where you want to remember the name. The reason being, hold on, I'm almost there. Um, um, let me see. This, this this lady, hold on one second. Spellman. And now, moving on while, while I'm looking for this, I wanted to say... Um, Um, that Cosby uh, had a lot of things that he did that was great. And I want to say this. He has a tremendous legacy, a tremendous one, right? right. A phenomenal legacy. I'm not trying to take nothing away from me. For, for me, it's like a familial personal thing. You know, you can be in a great a family and have a great family member that everybody loves, but they sort of like didn't look after their own or, or engage with their own. And that's sort of the feelings I had. But, you know, I was on Twitter and this white Jewish lady named Michelle started bothering me. I says, God, this woman's trying to get some. And I'm not, you know, it's just no white woman. I want a black woman. I mean, I'm, I'm just me. I'm, I don't understand black men being with white women. I mean, I know some that do. I just, I don't want to be one of them, okay? And this lady would follow me and would write me. And I'd go, okay, I would always run her off. And one day, you know, because, you know, I'd be up on Twitter just laying it down, how I felt about stuff. And she says, I really find you very interesting to read. I'm like, okay, she's macking. Becky Mack, all right. Um, and, and I'm like, okay, fine. And then one day she says, um, how do you feel about Bill Cosby? And that was the wrong thing to say to me. I said, fuck Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hearing me, brother? Oh, yeah. Janetta B. Cole, that's her name. Connecticut. It's the name is so irregular. Right. I don't. That's the only person I know with that name, Janetta Cole. Yeah. Janetta Cole is a very good sister. I think she's one of the first women presidents of Spelman. I think she was the first one. Yes, sir. Yeah. I think and she and yeah. just a phenomenal lady, a, an awesome sister. Mm-hmm. And so it was a good thing for Bill to give, and that that made that was something that everybody was proud of. All right. Now back to Michelle. Mm-hmm. So she says, you know, I'm, why are you like that? I mean, I said, this fuck who does it. I feel fuck him. Mm-hmm. And, and she said, uh, well, so you think he's guilty? I says, no, I don't think Bill Cosby's guilty. 
of, of rape, but he's guilty of dogging his family. F that nigga. I mean, this, he just turned his back on us. And then you got all this money for these white hoes. You could have bought some hot dogs for your family to know the union. That's mm. small stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, we, nobody, you know what my cousin wanted? Thelma, all she wanted from Bill was like a grant where we could put all of the family history from Africa and Canada and the U.S. and Europe and Latin America together. It cost money to do that. And she couldn't do that with Social Security money. And with cheap, back with small town Southern folks in our family, yeah, they cheap and send you down to Virginia. I see why people move to the city to get away from that stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I said that about small town coons. And Bill Cosby, what he did, which really set me off, was he didn't acknowledge being related to us until Thelma. Okay. Thelma's a woman that Alex Haley ripped off one of the many people he robbed for roots. Mm -hmm. That's how respected she was. She got Alex Haley the grant to write the book. Wow. And so when Bill waited for her to get dementia to acknowledge that he was related to us after she had been out there since the fifties and you start dealing with this in the, in the two thousands, you know, wouldn't you, that's a big, you know, he gave, he gave her a big professional middle finger. And so I was like, damn, she can't enjoy it now. Mm-hmm. I'm serious. And when I went to see my cousin last, because she'd been ripped off by everybody, I mentioned Alex Haley. And my cousin hated Alex Haley so much. She's in a wheelchair, dragging herself around by the back of her feet, screaming at me, saying, what you come to take from me now, Haley? Wow. I wouldn't have had a friend. I took my other cousin, mm-hmm. someone that we have to talk about, Avatar. You know, Avatar was written, uh, it was two screenplays called Aquatica and Pollination, written by my cousin Bryant Moore, who's from uh, Albany, New York. He was the mm-hmm. president of Howard University's uh, student class. He was the president uh, 1986, 80, 1986, president Houston. He went with me to meet my cousin because we all have, you know, she has a house that's like a museum with statues, pictures, you know, like her great grandfather was uh, John C. Breckenridge, who was the Secretary of War for the Confederacy. Mm-hmm. Vice President of the United States and also second runner up of the con- second runner up for president behind Lincoln, head of the Constitution Union Party. That's so yeah. That's why, you know, people want to do this Confederate stuff. I always tell people then you have to make me the executive because I have the highest ranking family line wow. in the Confederacy. Mm-hmm. Not that I wanna do it, just I had to tell one devil that who's I had I called a friend of mine. You've heard of Wayne Matson, investigative reporter. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was I was with Peter Bailey, who I think you know of, who's Malcolm X's secretary. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to I had Peter Bailey meeting with Dave Chappelle's mom, okay? I was trying to get her a boyfriend. And was, <laughs> <laughs> Cause she's a nice, she's a wonderful lady, okay? Yeah, she I like is. she definitely is. And so let me tell you what happened. I called and this dude started boast about being at the Confederate uh, Confederate so, uh, Veterans Museum, whatever. And he was so arrogant. And I said to him, you know, you can go to hell, sir. In fact, I need to come and take your job. What did your folks do in the Civil War? Get hit with a mini ball at Pickett's Charge? <laughs> I said, look, my great, great, great grandfather was head of the Confederate uh, War Department. Your family was nothing. I need to come in and take your damn job. What do you say? Well, he got scared because in reality, a lot of these people don't even know whether their folks fought the Confederate Army or not. Mm-hmm. And, and a whole bunch of black folks are descendants. You know, my mentor, I'll tell you about him. His name is Philip Smith. Okay. Philip Smith was the brother who did a lot of the writing for the Black Power Conferences in 66 and 72. Mm-hmm. There's a man named Philip Smith from Chicago, Philip Smith Jr. Mm-hmm. In fact, Philip Smith Jr. ran the first campaign that got John Conyers started, mm. first campaign that got Mayor Hatcher started, 
mm-hmm. worked on the campaigns that got Cynthia McKinney back into Congress as well as races before. He worked on the first campaign to get Gibson, the first black mayor in Newark. He worked on Coleman Young's first campaign to get him the first black wow. mayor of Detroit. Mm-hmm. He gave technical advice for the, this is all right. He's the great, great grandson of Stonewall Jackson. So mm-hmm. if these people want to play these games about these statues and all, then they need to have these people's real family be the interpreters. Nobody will want no Confederate statues if people like me are the ones talking about the history of our family. The white folks will knock them down for us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what. So yeah, he. The conversation quickly changed. Mm. So uh, back to Thelma, she was just tripping, uh, screaming and cussing at Alex Haley. So that means the last time I saw my cousin, because Alex Haley never gave her a penny. The title Roots had nothing to do with Alex Haley's novel. The original title was Before This Anger. Roots was my cousin's name for a, her genealogical, genealogical essay on the short Brooks Campbell short family that includes Arthur Ashe and, and uh, Bobby Short, the piano player, mm-hmm. the one that was born Gloria Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, at least he's too high. Okay, right. And Alex Haley decided to steal her title and put it on his book because his publisher didn't like it. Uh, Aside from that, if you've ever read Roots and Alex Haley's mother, which is his father's sister's name, Shanty. Mm -hmm. Shanty is my ancestor. doesn't have a goddamn thing to do with Alex Haley. So I have a signed copy of Roots. I've never bothered to read it because he's a fraud. Now, back to Cosby. This is a sidebar, so you can understand this genealogy is serious in our family, okay? Now, moving right along, Cosby, this woman, when I went off on her saying that Bill Cosby, this is Michelle, the Jewish lady, mm-hmm. when I went off on Bill Cosby about dissing us, she got happy. I didn't know she was happy, and she began plotting to get me to have a conversation with Bill Cosby, thinking that maybe Bill Cosby could win or at least be vindicated in his upcoming trial if he had his family stand by him. This lady began bugging me over Twitter. So when are you going to help Bill Cosby? This is damn, look, Bill Cosby doesn't give a damn about us. We don't matter. I don't hate Bill. I don't think, but you know, when black folks make it, they turn on the rest of us. I'm not, I get it. He's up there. We're down here with nobody. Mm-hmm. And you know, I got to give this lady some credit. She has heart. She just kept coming after me. Why won't you help Bill Cosby? Bill Cosby is your family. Bill Cosby is your blood. Why do you black people hate each other so much? I mean, it's why, why don't you stand up and fight this, these white people trying to kill him? Mm-hmm. Just to see you. I've been following you. You're fighting for people in Iran, and you won't fight for your cousin. God damn you. <laughs> just like, oh. I mean, this white one loves Bill Cosby. Okay, she had a, uh, did she have a relationship with Bill Cosby or something? No. She's a Jewish woman who's an Iraqi Mizrahi Jew who doesn't like other Jews because they're racist. Mm-hmm. She does like black men, mm-hmm. but she said that the Jewish mafia was trying to destroy Bill Cosby. And the same people who had framed Bill Cosby had tried to steal her children in the Montgomery County court system. And it's a bunch of crooked, pedophile, mafia Jews and wasps mm-hmm. that don't respect any of the rules. And their scam down there is unsealing people's records, violating consent and other agreements to take people down. And what had happened to Bill had been done to her. And they're trying to steal her child. And she knew the Jewish people that were doing this and she can't stand those kinds of Jews. Mm-hmm. Once she started learning about racism, because she's she worked in the school system, she began to learn how black kids are just destroyed for the hell of it by white. And she got mad. Mm-hmm. So she kept hammering me. So I said, "Look, I don't know if this lady's real. Okay, fine. I'll mm-hmm. help Dan Bill Cosby. Go away." <laughs> and she says, "Are you really gonna help Bill Cosby? I said, yeah, because you're nagging shit on me. I, I don't appreciate it. Just great." So she sends me, uh, you need this phone number. 
And she sent me this phone number. And you know what crossed my mind, Heard? What's that? She's trying to get a booty call. Mm. God, white women are persistent. <laughs> God, I, <laughs> I am not, I, she's not going to get it. I'm not going to give her none. No. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know what? I'm not going to give her the satisfaction of saying I didn't call. So you know what I did? What you do? I went until about 3.30 in the morning to call the number. Mm -hmm. I called at 3.30 in the morning, and I left a message. Mm. And at 3.45, I got a call back. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, here it comes. But it wasn't a white woman's voice. It was a black man's voice. Mm -hmm. The guy's name is uh, Andrew Wyatt, Bill Cosby's publicist. The one you see leading him around with the fat, fat back meat on the back of his head, the J.C. Yeah. Penny suit with the glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He said, um, well, short, I think we should talk to you. Well, okay, fine. We're going to talk to Bill. In fact, we're talking at four in the morning. He says, do you think you can talk at seven? I'm not going to say no. So I yeah. said, yes, but you know what happened? What? I overslept. <laughs> yeah, 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 I understand that. So I, I called him back maybe about 11 o'clock. I got my attorney, uh, my brother, my buddy, Ken Nixon, one of the best black attorneys in the country. And I had him partner with me. And we talked to Andrew White again. And... Andrew let Bill know we wanted to talk to him. And this was back in October last year. And Bill and us talked for like 90 minutes. Bill became particularly friendly when he realized I knew about St. Paul College in Lawrenceville. And I even told him that he told my favorite older cousin, Robert Short, who lives in Lawrence, South Carolina, who was on the board of trustees of St. Paul College in Lawrenceville, that in fact, Bill Cosby was a part of the Short family. Okay. He couldn't deny, yes, yeah, I know who you told. He told me the day that you told him. <laughs> you can't make this up. I'm not trying to get a T-shirt. I'm telling you what it is. And then Bill began to really just open up. And the thing that was crazy that was so crazy. I'll just tell you a quick story about Bill Cosby. You know, Bill Cosby grew up in the projects in Philly, right? Yeah. Do you know why the Cosby family moved from, in fact, I have to tell you, my cousin Selma Doswell, the genealogist, mm -hmm. her oldest son's name is Cosby. It's a common name in our family, first name. Mm -hmm. So just to show you, this is, this is just something I'm making up. I'm not, you know, nobody wants a, a convicted rapist necessarily as a family member. I'm not saying he did it, but, you know, I, I hope the appeal goes. Through. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Cosby's uncle got called a nigger by a white man down in Virginia and he took a straight race and decapitated the white man. Wow. And that's how the Cosby's got to Philly. I think I told you the story to my family. Everyone, our family history is always the same. Somebody just can't take oppression from white folks. They will flip out and do something that's uncharacteristically cruel because they don't like being treated a particular way. But it's a choice, right? You made a choice to do that. Yes, <laughs> right. And he, he, he cut the man's he cut the man's head off, mm -hmm. and that's how Bill's family got to Philly. So did he change his last name to Cosby or something? Or like, was it? No, no, kept the name. Okay. No, no. My grandfather shot and killed the sheriff's son in Rocky Mountain in the thirties. He keep the he changed the name. Mm. <laughs> okay, so. And the stories are all the same for the people in our family. I don't know if you know uh, Dino, Dino Dean in Chicago who does a blog show. Yeah, I heard of Dino, yeah. 
Dino's my cousin too. Okay. Do you know Dino? His folks are from Rocky Mount, and know. his great grandfather <laughs> shot a battle. A battle. He's in the battle family. Okay. Okay. Kill somebody white, and they moved to Chicago, and it's the same. Whenever you talk to anyone, it's always the same. Somebody black couldn't take it, flipped out, and hurt someone. The family had to move. Okay. Yeah. It's not like the movie The Butler. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you, in fact, my family was from around Macon. Okay. That's Empire and uh, Chester, Georgia, not far from Macon. Okay. Okay. And. My great grandfather, I think, off somebody, and that's how our family moved to North Carolina and changed their name. So the story is always the same. <laughs> These things run in bloodlines of people who who have a kind of behavior that just go off on someone. I'm not going to take this I'm going to hurt someone. Mm -hmm. So we had a great conversation. It was really, really nice. I did not record it because I promised Mr. Cosby, and I kept my word. So I can't prove it, but I wouldn't lie to you. At the end of the conversation, I told Nixon, because Bill Cosby asked us to please stay in touch. And I told uh, Ken that Andrew Wyatt, the little fat dude that leads Bill Cosby around, mm -hmm. was, was jealous of me because I have an organic connection to Cosby. And he's not going to tolerate me having any rapport with Cosby. He's going to sabotage our effort. What we had wanted to do was get a grassroots campaign together comprised of family and activists to say, we want Bill Cosby to be uh, innocent until proven guilty. We were promised another opportunity to talk to Cosby. And Andrew Wyatt said that he would talk to us in a couple of days. And Andrew Wyatt didn't keep his word. By the time we caught back up with Andrew White, I was in Montreal, Canada, and he played games with us that day. When we finally got him, uh, Ken and I had put together a proposal called Preserving a Legacy. We had asked for a small sum of resources to get a bunch of experts and black folk who would fight for Cosby better than what these Jews were doing. The guy got angry and says, why should I give you so much money? He says, you don't have to give us. You, let's see what we can do for him before you tell us no. We ain't greedy. We understand nothing's free, but we'll work for it. And he was just really nasty and stank about it. Mm -hmm. Mind you, they paid Mazaro millions, and he failed. Mm -hmm. We asked him for thousands. That's reasonable. Bill Cosby stood to lose millions. Come on, man. If you had millions of dollars, tens, hundreds of millions, mm -hmm. and you're, all, everything you had was at stake, and someone says, hey, look, I think we can help you for a few hundred thousand. Does that sound like a big loss? And, and what you need to know is that there have been a bunch of black lawyers who've been paid up to a half million dollars apiece who didn't even submit an invoice to Cosby. They did no work. Mm-hmm. If you could, they, they, these people were working against Cosby, taking money from the enemies of Cosby and Cosby's money and didn't deliver it. And they didn't even ask for it back. What about the now, Presley? Thinking, what about the Monique Presley? I mean, what, what was it? I believe was run out by <laughs> Wyatt. I, I don't feel like Wyatt is competent. I do know that he has lied. He has lied to Bill Cosby about the extent of work that he's done. If you look up Wyatt and try to find out about the firm that he says he represents, you can't find it on the internet. It's hard to find. Who is he? That's Who is this guy? Yeah. Do you know what Andrew Wyatt told us? And I have a witness to this, that he had an extensive social media uh, campaign to protect and, and put out the word on Bill Cosby. Have you seen it? Mm -mm. That's what he says. And he said no media was really willing to let Bill speak. That's not true. I bet there's a whole bunch of people that love to help Bill speak. Exactly. Now, now you see my point. Since, since I have nothing to lose, my conclusion is that Mr. Wyatt is either wittingly or unwittingly causing Bill Cosby's demise. Okay.
okay, I had people at RT and Press TV, and I could have gotten others interested in Bill Cosby. But I, the person that was blocking it was Mr. Wyatt. Bill Cosby said he wanted to speak to us again. Mr. Wyatt never let that happen. Now, what happened when we spoke to him on the phone in October of last year, he got angry about the money, which wasn't a whole lot. I need to let you know it was under $200,000. And it wasn't going to all go into anybody's pocket. Uh, it was to do oppositional research and other things to help Cosby. Uh, he got into an argument with Ken, and he says, uh, Mr. Cosby's my client. He's a client. As a client. And, and what Ken says is, for me, Bill Cosby is not a client. He's a cause. Guy got mad. And that's when I tried to come in because I was silent for most of it. And I said, Andrew, what you need to understand, brother, is that the next trial is set for April. April is the 50th anniversary or the commemorative anniversary of Dr. King's assassination in Memphis, April 4th. Brother, they killed the dreamer in April, and they want to kill one of their leading exponents of the dream. In April, 50 years later, they're going to hook Bill Cosby up to Me Too, which he's not a part of. And they're going to, it says, if you don't let us help you, they're going to convict Bill, Bill Cosby within just about three weeks after the anniversary of Dr. King's assassination. And a speedy trial, it's going to happen so fast. It doesn't have to be that way. He slammed the phone down on me. He claimed that his phone cut off. It's not true. He did not want us to help Bill. Are you hearing me hurt? Yeah. Didn't Bill Cosby get convicted just about three weeks after Dr. King's assassination? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some people say I'm a prophet. I'm not trying to be a psychic. I'm just being... However, I, I'm led to be, okay? Have you noticed I tell you about stuff and it happens? Yeah. I ain't, I, that's God. It's not me. I don't know anything about the future. Mm-hmm. Happened just like I said. You know, I haven't heard from that dog. Mm. He can't admit. And see, if you had told me something months in advance, almost to the day, I would have to come back and say, brother, I made a mistake. Can you help me? But he did send us an email. Our services and our communication with him is no longer desired and would be of no, basically no use. And it's Andrew Wyatt. Yes, but Andrew Wyatt has, no one can get to Cosby. You have to go through Wyatt. So I, you know, I, I went to something, I was researching something right quick, and it, it, it linked to his uh, LinkedIn page. And it says he's from okay. Birmingham, Alabama, but I have a I saw an article about him being Cosby, who was Andrew Wyatt from two years ago, but it can't find too much of anything else on him. That's it. He hasn't done the work for Cosby. It's the elephant in the room is this, <laughs> this uh, bubblicious coon. <laughs> bubblicious coon, wow. <laughs> and nobody, nobody's just, just, you can't talk to Camille. This. And so Bill Cosby is going to go to jail. And every time Bill Cosby gets screwed in the media, he gets screwed in the media when he went to that AP meeting. Remember Bill Cosby, the guy jumped out in the rape thing? You mm. know who set up the interview? Who? Andrew Wyatt. Mm. For Good Morning America, the day after the trial, and Andrew Wyatt's talking about Bill Cosby's walking around uh, as a free man. And then the judge says that Bill Cosby's under house arrest. He's going to need an ankle collar. Mm-hmm. I was said my man was free. Remember when Bill Cosby comes out of the trial and it's the hung jury, and this guy declares it's a legal victory, and he has his fist up in the air, black power. Mm. Would you do that if you knew Montgomery County is the home of the Klan? Mm-mm. Nope. That's the person that, that's Bill Cosby 
after all this talking about black folks and so forth, and I kind of get part of what he's talking about, he's being done in by greedy Jews and this coon. I've asked people in Birmingham. I'm trying to find anybody, does anyone know this guy? And and you can't find anything. This, a real reputable PR firm, that should be more. Don't you think? Most definitely, yeah. So, but no, and where's the black press? Nobody asks nothing. Do you realize they have some sort of consent? You try to find Monique Presley. I, you can't, there's no email, there's nothing. They made her disappear. Anybody, you can't get in. I reached out to Alvin Poussaint. Nope, I won't help you. You can't talk to him. No, just go away. He's busy. Hmm. That's a and, this, so he's, Bill Cosby's being led to the slaughter by this Judas Goat Coon and the kosher Nostra thugs. What do I think they want? The same way they want Michael Jackson's catalog and they want Prince's catalog and his masters. They want a different world and all the stuff is going to be in the hands of Karzarian thugs. I don't have a damn thing to do with no rape. In fact, as ugly as some of those brats were, they should be glad Bill was willing to drug them and give them some. In fact, maybe he had to take the drugs to go down on anything so ugly. Wow. And it's interesting, just before Bill Cosby died, those white lesbians in California that raped those and abused and starved those black kids out in the Pacific Northwest and then killed them in California. Nobody talks about that. And they use a little silly black woman with the fake Indian jury to talk bad about Bill Cosby. Let's see how fast before people even forget about her. We got a lot of useless black women. I'm telling you, useless, useless, useless. Just They say because they got a white girlfriend that they matter. I'm so tired. And then, you know, the other thing that got me, the little idiot black woman that had a um, little idiot sister mm-hmm. had, her, um, had her, her breast exposed. Remember that? She ran out and attacked Bill Cosby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had a, you know she had a white boyfriend, right? Mm-mm. Didn't you start seeing a lot of these idiot black women that are doing a lot of this craziness. They all have white girlfriends or white husbands or boyfriends that use them. They're like weaponized Sally Hemings. Wow. That's all I'm going to say. Bill Costner's being betrayed, targeted by the Jews. By the way, I want to remind you, remember Herman Cain was running for president? Yeah. And Mm -hmm. one Zimbo after the other showed up. And yeah. it caused Herman Cain's wife to have heart problems. Mm. Who was behind it? Jewish, Jewess, mm-hmm. Gloria Allred, who represented the Goldman family and the Brown family against OJ. Right. Gloria Allred, who went after Eddie Murphy in relationship to the Spice Girl. Gloria Allred. Who gave the little Swedish tramp all of Tiger Woods money? Gloria Allred. And I want to point out a coon in this thing. The one with the James Brown wig. Her name is Maxine Waters. In fact, she needs to go to the emergency room and get some Botox. They say black don't crack, but she's an exception to the rule. Mm. You know who's buddies with Gloria Allred? Maxine Waters. Hmm. If you saw the Dick Gregory funeral, remember Maxine Waters said to Bill Cosby, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Right. What a lie. How can you be friends to Gloria Allred and be friends to Bill Cosby, Maxine Waters? Hmm. You're fake. You used to be relevant. You don't even have any black people in your district and you support DACA. 
your contradiction aside from being unattractive? Mm. 